y'all. Last week on Facebook Live, um, we were chatting about what to do with kids who finish early. We've been doing Facebook Live chats with a huge, fun group of art teachers every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you ever want to join the fun, make sure to pop on over to Facebook and hang out with me on my Facebook page. So last week we were chatting about what to do with early finishers because it's something that we all struggle with. You don't necessarily want to get them started on something new because then you'll end up with the same problem the following art class. It's always great to have kids who are all on the same page, but let's face it, it just never really ever seems to happen that way. So when you have those friends who finish early, what do you do? So I have my little list of things that we chatted about the other night, and I thought I'd share that with you. So the first thing is this. Are they really finished? Like, seriously? Because when you look at that artwork that they're showing you and they're telling you that's finished, is that really what you were hoping for? Is that really up to their awesome and amazing standards? And if not, I usually will give them a couple of things to work on. Or what works even better is having them go ask a couple of friends. You know what? You, you might think you're finished, but why don't you go get a little critique? A critique is when you ask a buddy what they think. Go find a couple friends, see if there's anything that they think you might want to add. And if so, keep working on it. So I always like to have them ask me, but it always seems to, come, to work a little better when they ask a friend. And if they are finished, then I like to have them be the teacher, especially when I'm doing something like weaving or um, sewing or clay, especially weaving and sewing. When it's one of those things that a lot of kids get it and they get it good, they got it. And then there's those other kids who are like on the brink of getting it, but they still need a little bit of help. They need to have somebody actually doing it more in front of them for them to watch it. So for that reason, if I have my early finishing friends um, and it's something that needs to be instructed or taught, I have them do peer tutoring, which works great. They do a fabulous job of speaking each other's language, I have found. Um, if they are finished, indeed done, and there is no need for peer tutoring, if it's something like a painting project or a collage where everybody's just working independently, then one thing that I love to have them do when they're done is write. So I have this set up at that little area in my room that I call the store, and it's just little post-it notes that they have to do when they're finished with their art project. While creating this work of art, I learned. And so I have them write these in three complete sentences, and I'll share with you at the end of this video where they put these um, when they're finished filling them out. I also like to have them write their name. That way, if there's anything I need to address with a student, like if there's a concern or they mention something that I think I'd like to talk with them about, then it's great to know who to talk to. This is fabulous when you have administration walk in your room and they can see, wow, look, not only are the kids doing a post-assessment, but they're also writing and then there's that language arts thing, which is fabulous. So this is a great thing to have when they're finished. It's also what I like to call a speed so you know how you have those kids who rush to get things finished. If those kids who like to rush know that there's something that's maybe not so tantalizing like a writing activity, they might slow their roll a little bit. So this is a little bit of a hiccup or a speed bump. And I have a couple of these that'll make the early finishing tasks less tantalizing for them. So this would be one of them, writing about what you do. Something else that I have my students do are, if they finish early, um, I have them do drawing sheets. Now, when we talk about early finishers, if you have those kids where it's only like five minutes left, then have them do peer tutoring, have them clean up, have them do the writing, and that be it. But sometimes we have a little bit of a longer period of time, maybe seven to ten minutes, where you just have kids, one or two, that are finished. The room's tidy. There's nobody who needs help. They've already done their writing. In which case, I like to have some drawing sheets for them. Sometimes these drawing sheets are a review. Sometimes my drawing sheets are a little bit of an intro of what's on the horizon. So let me show you. So one drawing sheet that I just recently used with my um, first graders and kindergartners was this one. It had a front and a back, and it was a review of symmetry and asymmetry. 
So on one side, they had to draw whatever they saw in the box below, above, the best they could in the box below. And they had to draw things that were all symmetrical. And it's fabulous when they do these because they really focus, they get calm, and they get quiet. And that is great because then that means the early finishers are not distracting the kids who are still working, which can sometimes be an issue. On the reverse side of the sheet were the exact same images, but this time they are asymmetrical. So this was a great review for my first and kindergarten students who had just learned about symmetry when they were cutting and drawing hearts. Um, one thing that my fourth graders did was they did one of these sheets that was um, a little bit of what's on the horizon for them. And this kind of gave them an idea of what to expect because they're getting ready to learn how to draw three-dimensional candy hearts. And this sheet kind of walked them through the steps and then I gave them the task of trying to create a spilled box of candy hearts. What I love about these sheets is that if I'm thinking okay I know I'm gonna have some early finishers I just go to the copy room fold a piece of paper several times to create these lines and boxes and then I just think okay we're doing symmetry I'll just put a couple of things here because usually like I said it's just a handful of those kids who are working on these sheets. Um, also my third graders what was on the horizon for them were foxes so I had some images I just printed off the computer of how to draw foxes so they could just start practicing that and a lot of times I'll let them take these sheets with them just because it's great for them to practice at home. So that's something that I do with my students when I have a longer amount of time. I do have centers and I'm sure you do too but again you don't want to make it so that they're rushing to get to those centers so throwing some roadblocks in the way like writing about your artwork, doing a drawing sheet makes it so they don't rush to get to those. So let's talk centers. I do have some centers in my room and these are for my kids. You know, they've done everything else. Um, I have a blocks center and it's just a little area, the jungle lounge in my room. I'll share that as well at the end of the video um, where the kids know that they can go, they can dump out the box of blocks and they work together and create. Um, I also have a lots and lots of how to draw books. If you um, are looking to buy how to draw books, I would strongly recommend looking into Dover Publishing because they make very inexpensive and simple drawing books for your students. Dover Publishing, great resource. Um, I also have dry erase boards. My students love to draw on dry erase boards. Oftentimes I'll even put something like this on my Elmo or in my document cam so they can see it and they can sit and practice. This makes it so I don't have a lot of wasted free draw paper. If my students have a longer amount of time, I'm all for them drawing on free draw, but this is a great solution for my students when we don't have tons of time so I don't end up with paper waste. And I recently just created some um, cursive writing boards. These were boards that I picked up at Target. They already had the lines on them and I just drew some cursive writing in Sharpie. I put clear packing tape over it so that it wouldn't accidentally get smudged or erased. And then the kids have been practicing their cursive writing on the lines underneath. Um, like I said, I've got blocks, how to draw books, sorry about that, dry erase board, and fashion plates that I've recently found at the thrift store have been a huge, huge hit with my students. Um, I also like to have little free activities for them that tie in with what we just completed. For example, my second graders just explored the artist Chris Uphughes. They made these really fun heart collages based on Chris Uphughes and they did some printmaking. So I decided I need a, a dress to match their masterpieces. So I just got some inexpensive fabric, muslin at the store, laid it out on the tables and they've been printing and drawing um, faces on that fabric as they finished. So it's a great tie-in and it's a fun um, early finisher activity for them. So ha, ah, early finishers. This was a long ramble, my apologies, but I hope that that helps you out when you have kids who finish early. Remember to throw some of those roadblocks in the way so your early finishing activities aren't so fun that they rush to get to them. I love to hear your suggestions in the comments and I'll talk to you guys real soon. And make sure to pop by on Wednesday if you'd like to join us for our next chat, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, Cassie Stevens Facebook page. Bye, you guys. So here's the board that I created where my students add what they've learned today. So just take a post-it note and they have to write in three complete sentences something they've learned. So these were just a handful of the early finishers that I had in third grade today, so not too many. 
I did have several friends finish early in um, fourth grade today. So here's just a little bit of what they had to write. It has to be legible. You can see some of them made sure to add their name so that I can talk to them about anything that they wrote afterwards. So this is just a simple board and I made the board dry erase. So these papers are actually dry erase because my friends in kindergarten and first grade might not be able to write out in complete sentences. So sometimes when we are lined up and I have a moment or two, I can ask them what they've learned today. And then I just kind of jot it down on here with a dry erase marker. So this is my look what we learned today board. So this is my jungle lounge area. This is where my students can go to play blocks. Um, and it's got this faux flooring that I picked up from Walmart in it. There's the blocks that you see there. And I do have a couple of extra bins with art supplies like color pencils and things like that. And that's just because um, in case my friends want to add color to their free draw drawings, in case they do a free draw, it's available for them as well. So that's my block area for my friends who finish early along with all my free draw books. I know I mentioned having a store where kids know to get their supplies. So this is my store and I just recently took um, duct tape and divided that table. You can see the lines of tape down the table and then put the little grade level um, icons right above it so the kids know exactly where their art supplies are. So I don't have friends in first grade getting giant sheets of paper that fourth grade is using for their drawing. It just helps really clarify where their art supplies are. And then I mentioned that I have some students who had finished their printing and drawing early and I was having them just doing some fabric um, exploration, some textile making. So they're using fiber paint to print these hearts and then Sharpie markers and they're working on drawing these. This is second grade after having learned about the artist Chris F. Hughes. And who knows what I'll do with this fabric. Um, maybe I'll make it into something, but right now they're just having a ton of fun and it's a great review for them to do when they finish a little bit early.